see what we got here. Okay, all right. Okay, I hope that's not our, our new internet that's doing that. But it, 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 it logs me off. So, uh, chapter 15, and let me go ahead and read these, uh, these scriptures, uh, these verses right now. Chapter 15, verses uh, 1 through, through uh, 10. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, and in which you stand, by which you have, which you are saved, if you hold fast to that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and He, and that he had, had was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500, brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain uh, this, to, to, uh, to, to, to this present time, but have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then all by all the apostles. Then last of all, of all, he was seen by me also, and by, as one uh, born out of due time, for I am the least of the apostles, whom I am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in, which is in, which is in me. So as we look at uh at chapter 15, uh, you know, they, they say that that uh, chapter 15 is the crowning glory of, of, th of this epistle because now he's starting to talk about uh, the, the substance of what we believe, the doctrine. He's talking about um, uh, Christ now. And it says that, uh, that, that it's surrounding, uh, this particular doctrine is surrounding the, the resurrection. And so as we look into chapter 15, we're going to look at at topics that's going to cover uh, the, the facts of the resurrection. Uh, there in verses one through four, it's going to really it's going to talk about the three count, uh, the threefold count of the gospel. In uh, verses five through eleven, it talks about the proof of the resurrection. In verses twelve and through nineteen, it talks about the importance of the resurrection. In verses 20 through 34, it talks about the order of the resurrection. And then again, in verses 35 through 50, it talks about the nature of the resurrection. So tonight, we're going to uh, just look at a couple of these, uh, these occurrences. Uh, Paul, uh, he doesn't beat around the bush. And, and we know how Paul is. Paul is, is very straightforward. Sometimes he, he does come around uh, the back door. He will come in the side door, mm -hmm. but he doesn't beat around the bush. Mm -hmm. And so so he's not hitting, he not hitting, and he's not beating around the bush about the resurrection. And so he said, the gospel which I preach to you. And so he's telling them right off the bat that he's giving them something that was given to him. And he de describes the contents of this gospel and, and how it could be beneficial to man. And however, it can only benefit if it is received and then if one stands on it. Now, now you think about that because uh, it, it's one thing to receive the gospel. It's another thing to stand on the gospel. And so what he saying that it's going to be very beneficial if you do both, if you receive the gospel and if you stand on the gospel. So 
So we know uh, that the gospel means really in effect the good news. And the Corinthian Christians uh, uh, had first received the gospel. So they did receive the gospel. And 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 uh, and like anything that we receive, that we must also learn how to embrace the gospel. So now let me ask a question. Do you think, just from what we know about the Corinthian Christians, did they embrace the, the gospel? Did they embrace it? Yeah, the Corinthian Christians, did they embrace the gospel? Now we know they received the gospel because you know Paul started the church there, and it was really a, a it was an affluent church. I mean, even though they were doing a lot of things wrong, did they? Do you think that they uh, believed and embraced the gospel? Well, I think they did, but it's uh, took them a couple of times to do so. Yeah, they they needed some uh, what some instruction. They needed some teaching. They needed some correction. They, they needed a whole lot. Yeah, they needed yeah. to be, they got a little, yeah, they, yeah. They, they got a little rebuke in there too. Yeah. You know, the uh, Paul had to rebuke them uh, on, on a couple of different occasions. Uh, but they they learned how to stand on the gospel. That That is one thing that that uh, we can, can take note, that they learned how to stand on the gospel. And despite all the problems that they had, because remember, as we've gone, gone through Corinthians, uh, they had problems with carnality. They had problems with, uh, with uh, the lack of understanding. They had pro problems with strife. Uh, they had problems with division. Remember they were dividing up into little sections and into little cliques. They, uh, they had uh, problems with immorality. You know, uh, they had uh, a boy right in the midst of them that was sleeping with his father's wife and I mean it was other immoral things that, that was going on mm -hmm. they uh, they didn't even practice uh, uh, the, the communion table the Lord's table or the Lord's supper properly and Paul had to straighten them out about that you know they were getting drunk and, and they were concentrating more on the feast and eating than, than on the intent of why they needed to get together so they had all of this stuff going on but in spite of all of that, they stood on the gospel. You know, so that's one thing that we can give them credit for. Well, how did they stand on the gospel? They were doing all that. How did they think what they were doing was right? They were, they were just, just had a misunderstanding. And, they, uh, and, and so that's really what Paul did. He straightened them out. He was straightening them out along the way. But meaning that when, when we say stand on the gospel, they, they were not running from the gospel. And, and guess what? And even when Paul, and, and I have to say this, he was presenting them the truth, they didn't run from the truth. You know, and, and we don't see them running from the truth. Or do we see them running from the truth? Any, any comments on that? Are they running from the truth? Did they run from the truth? Did they hide? Did they say, no, that's not us? You're not talking about us. <laughs> you know, we don't see them giving that type of reply or that type of response to Paul's correction. So, so yeah, they needed. I mean, and, and they needed to be taught. They needed to uh, to know. I mean, because remember, he was there for 18 months. He went away. He got word that things were just not going right. He sent Timothy. Timothy was there for a short period of time, and so Paul is writing them a letter saying, "Look, that that things are not going the way that I envisioned them to go." That, that somehow we got off track. And let's straighten this stuff out. So that's what he's doing, straightening it out through a letter. And he says that I'm going to come to you soon, or it's my desire to come to you. And when you see me face to face, then then we're going to really get this thing straight. And remember, at one point, he says, do you, because they were telling him, remember they told him that, that you talk pretty bold in a letter. <laughs> I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But they said, you talk pretty bold in a letter, but then uh, when, when, when you face to face, you don't have that, that kind of boldness. And he said, look, I can let you see that, that part of me if you really want to see that part of me. You know, so it's not just, I'm not just talking bold in a letter, that I can back it up. And so, so and I believe that, that, uh, that what he's doing, he, and they embrace this. I mean, they didn't run from the gospel. 
Because guess what? If they had ran from this, then there probably would not have been a letter to the Corinthians. We wouldn't be reading about the Corinthians if they if they uh, just completely gave up on the gospel. And this is what he's going to be talking about as far as the resurrection that 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 um, that it wasn't done in vain. What you believe was not in vain. So let's 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 move on. Any comments so far? Yeah, I, I think a lot of times too, change is not easy. Yeah. I mean, they, you, you look at the background of in Corinth and where they where they were, where they were located, and and, and, and be Gentiles. The change was no need overnight. Sometimes you do need a um, um, a, a boost. I guess. Right. So the change. We can all say we're doing something. We start out that way, but then we look, look back to our old way. Mm -hmm. Or a gentle reminder. You know, gentle reminder. Yeah. 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 It, it does. It doesn't. And uh, and and sometimes we need to to. Uh, it, it, and there's something about the Lord because what did the Lord tell the people to do in Deuteronomy concerning their children, and told them to always be teaching your children. Now it's something to say. I'm gonna teach my child something one time. And, but you can't just do it one time. You got to do it over and over and over. And so the same way with us that 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 we're being taught over and over and over again. And and it could it could either be by uh, the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word, or the inspiration of the, the Holy Spirit is continually teaching us and, and and causing us to grow. Because you know when the word goes in, it, it's going to do one of the two things. We're either going to do like they did, embrace it, or reject it. And so we know those who reject the word because it, the word has no no value. It has it, it has take, it hasn't taken any root in, a, in people's lives. And we, you know, we see those that type of sit, situation or that type of scenario. And so that's what Paul ended up saying. He says, "Look," he says, "by which you are saved." If you hold fast that that word which I have preached to you, so so was something he was encouraging him to do, holding fast to the word that was preached. So he he spoke a word, and it was a powerful word that he spoke. Hold fast to that, don't waver from that. He says they did well to receive the word, to stand on the word, or to stand in the gospel, and to hold fast to the gospel that was preached. So it was in spite of all of the stuff that was going on, and, and I have to emphasize that, that they still held fast to the gospel. You know, it was something that they believed. They didn't run away from that. And so he says, holding fast implies that there was uh, that 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 uh, that there was some something out there or someone out there. Or you know, people out there, because remember, Jesus told them that there are going to be uh, wolves and sheep clothing. That 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 he told them the parable about the minute that a seed is sown, that the enemy comes and tries to snatch that away. So what he's saying is that that there was an entity out there, the the spirit of the world, that world system, that was trying to snatch the true gospel away from them. And so, so that was what was keeping them in confusion. Is that 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 they let that 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 uh, that type of spirit in their midst that was keeping them in confusion. That that was trying to snatch the true gospel away from them. But Paul was saying, "Look, you need to hold fast to that. Stand in the word. Unless now, what's the downside of that? Unless someone's going to say you believed in vain. Wow." And I mean, and that's a that's a, a really tough statement right there. Unless you believed in vain, because what do, what do we believe? You know, and and sometimes we even say that that if if the resurrection wasn't true, then what what's the base of our belief? You know, so so there's a, a lot of people, and you know what? This is historical. I mean, you know, there's a historical part of Christ and what Christ did. There's a, there's a, uh, that, that historical element, meaning that it could be verified through history. And so we're talking also about this historical event that took place. It's, it's undeniable. 
that, that they can't say that this man didn't die, that he wasn't dead, he wasn't buried, he wasn't, he wasn't resurrected. So, so there's a historical element to this, and yet they were holding fast to, 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 those, to that concept. They were holding fast to, to that belief that, and they embraced it. He says, uh, because if they did not hold fast, it could be said that they believed in vain. And it's, and it's, it's, you know, we, we have situations, scenarios that we know right now that people grab hold of, of certain types of ministries and they believe wholeheartedly that this is the way. And guess what? what Jesus said that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And then they find out that after following a certain set or a certain pattern for years that, hey, that that's not it. That's not it. And and we know we can start naming groups and people that 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 practice that, that led people astray. They believed in vain. And and some of these guys started out on fire. Some of these guys started out preaching the true gospel. But guess what? Somehow along the line that they, they, they veered off to the left or they veered off to the right. And so anyway, so that's what, what Paul was saying. So he says, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. So he's saying that I didn't make this up. I, I, didn't, I didn't make it up that it was given to me and I'm giving it to you. So, you know, Paul didn't go around making up, up the gospel. And you know what? It says, let me read this. He received it and he didn't receive it from man, but he received it from Jesus Christ. And then we can look at uh, Galatians. Can somebody read Galatians 1, verses 11 and 12 for me? account for where he got his gospel, where he got that gospel from. And you know what? So he said, this is not, and you know what? It's not Paul's gospel. And a lot of times people, uh, uh, people interpret this as it's Paul's gospel. But you know what? It's not Paul's gospel. But in a sense, he created it uh, that, that in the sense that he created, he didn't create the gospel or he didn't fashion the gospel. He didn't shape the gospel. What he did was he he, he, he spread it uh, in a way where it conveyed that he believed what he was what was given to him and it's something when you believe what's given to you and and and, and you know that's, I'm not gonna say it's a dangerous thing but it's a powerful thing when you believe something and you begin to to uh, die you begin to 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 share that that you or conveying to somebody something you believe, guess what they're going to do? They're going to believe it too, because you believe it. And, and you know what? We, we, we have people that talk to us, and guess what we say? I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and we, we could too not, <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, we could, we could spot somebody that's phony a mile yeah. away. You know, I don't believe that. Or I don't buy, what do we say? I don't buy that. Yeah. You know, and, and we may say that in our mind. You know, but Paul, he was uh, uh, emphatic about believing what he was talking, what he was teaching, and what he was preaching. And he, he says, look, so he, he, it became personal. He, he actually personalized the gospel, meaning uh, in the sense that, that he, he believed it so much that it, it was a personal thing. It was a personal outflow. And, and you know what? When, when somebody's touched, I don't know when the last time we, we – uh, came across somebody that, that that was just so full of, of, of God and I mean and they so full that that you know the very words coming out of their mouth is just 
boosts confidence and it just touches you in a special way. It's like that spirit of that person is touching your spirit and it's like, oh boy, uh, I like this. And it's so, and it's important to notice that preachers do not make the gospel. We don't make the gospel. You know, I mean, uh, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ, really. We can't, we can't make that. We can't make it happen. So the gospel is not, uh, not just insightful teaching or good advice. And, and, and you know what? That some people would want to make it insightful teaching and good advice. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not like that. But, but really, the gospel is the core of all, all these things that, that are real and also things that were historically, that historically happened. That's what the gospel is about, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It happened. And so what we're doing, and when we share Jesus Christ, we're conveying things that took place. You know, this is, and then the, 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 the make it so neat. This is what took place in my life. You break it down because he did something in each one of our lives that we can, we can relate that to people. Not just what he did historically, but what he's doing personally right here. You know, that, that I know what the Apostle Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. You know, he knew what he was. And matter of fact, and he even mentions here before we close, we're going to see where he, he calls himself, uh, he calls us, the word he uses uh, refers to himself as something that was aborted. You know, so, so he considered himself uh, less than, than the rest of the apostles because he, he came in late. And, and so he said, I'm not even worthy of being called an apostle because uh, I persecuted the church. So he, he had that, there was like a stigma there that he, he kind of felt bad about the fact that he persecuted the church. And, and, and you know what? I mean, and, and that's a legitimate feeling. When, especially after he got a chance to meet, meet Christ. You know, hey, whoa, it's just, who art thou, Lord? And you know what? He didn't. He didn't have any problem right away acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord on the road to Damascus. Who art when when he got struck down? Who art thou, Lord? Is what he said. Let it stop, right, right. And and that yes. And so he goes on to say in verse three, he talks about what he what he received, I delivered it to you first of all. And then he says, and what did he say? The three things. Christ died. So yeah, Christ died. And so the death of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, is the center of the gospel. And, and, and you know, uh, when we, we talk about preaching the whole gospel, you know, what, what we say, they say in the court, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But we need to present, when we talk the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need to present the whole gospel. That, yes, he died. And, and, and guess what? Now, now God... God is building. God's building a case here, because um, he's using he's using the the, uh, the death of Jesus to to make a point. So yes, he 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 died. So how did Jesus? How did he die? Let's let's just talk about that for a second. Well, how did Jesus die? He, he was uh, crucified, right? And it was a Roman crucifixion. And Romans didn't invent crucifixion. I, I think, believe they got that from the Persians. So, so they, they, what they did was they perfected crucifixion. And, and it was cruel. It was, it was uh, meant to, to humiliate. It was uh, excruciating, an excruciating form of uh, punishment. And it was uh, 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 devised to, to destroy a person's uh, essence, you know, they demean the person, they 
they put this person on display. I mean, you talking about humiliation. I mean, to, to go through a crucifixion, and I mean, and, and of course, you know, the pictures we see, you know, he, he's wrapped up, but no, he's naked. You know, he, he was bare, and, and it was meant to, to, uh, to destroy that person's uh, image, you know. So they didn't invent it, but they perfected it, and guess what? It was a form of torture and capital punishment. So, yeah, so how did, how did he die? He died. That's how he died. Yeah, and so the, the worst way possible, and think about this, the worst way possible that a person could die. And, and we think, you know, they came out with what the lecture chair and the, the gas chamber, but I don't even think that that compared or paled to crucifixion. I don't think it did. And, and, and I mean, and, and I don't know that uh, factual because I, I didn't never experience crucifixion, but but just from from how it was described, uh, that it, it's cruel. to take place the way that he prophesied or foretold that it was going to take place. I mean, because we, we're looking at years and years and years of, uh, of foreknowledge that this is what was going to happen. And guess how it played out? Exactly the same way he said. And then it, Paul went on to say, because now the three things that he's stating, you know, first he died, how, uh, he died. It says that Christ died for our sins. And so we have to ask ourselves, uh, what does this mean? What does it mean that he died for our sins? How does his death do anything for our sins? And so we, we have to explore that because that has a real significant meaning about him dying for our sins. So at some point before he died, before the veil was torn in two, before he cried out it is finished, that, that something took place that there was a, a, a place where because he was taking on our sins that God lost fellowship with his son. Ooh, can we imagine that? Because God doesn't fellowship with sin, so he had to turn his back on his son. And so, so Jesus wasn't sinful, but he bore our sin. He took on our sin. And, and, and there's something about that. It says that the Father laid upon on the Son all the guilt and wrath of our sin. And, and, and it was undeserving for him, but it was deserving for us, but he took that away bored himself. But, and, and that too is consistent with the Old Testament because there can be no, no um, there can be no Sin cannot be um, redeemed without shedding the blood. Right. And you had, and then just going back to the Old Testament, back to the, the Holy of Holies. You, you had to put all this, you know, the sins were put on the Lamb, and mm -hmm. he's that Lamb, of course, and it's shedding the blood. So it's going to be loveless. And not only that, so the veil was thick, but all that goes away. Right. And, all, all and, and, and think about the wrath. Think about the wrath of God. See, God said, it says that, that 
God is God is God of wrath. But also in this, this act of him taking on our sin, he bore the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. So he actually spared us from the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and sometimes we miss that point. You know, not only did the, the sin element of it, but the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. And see, some are still going to, those who, who don't accept the way, are still going to experience the wrath of God. I mean, that's going to be a true and evident thing that's going to take place. But it says that uh, that he totally satisfied the wrath of God in our place, meaning that, that we don't have to be concerned as believers for having to experience the wrath of God. Woo! Boy, oh boy. And when you read Revelations, you get in there in Revelations. I remember Cheryl and I was, was studying Revelation, and time after the time after time we see where God was just waiting for the people to repent gave them plenty of opportunity to repent to turn from their ways and guess what they didn't repent they didn't turn from their ways they were uh, uh, doomed to experience that wrath of God but he gave them opportunity to, to turn from their sins so, so they could be spared from that wrath but it, the, the wrath is coming and so uh, it's an act of uh, of being judged for he was he went through an act of being judged for sin in our place. Ooh, boy oh boy. When we talking about standing in proxy. Mm -hmm. He he stood in proxy for us. And and I mean it was real. Mm -hmm. I mean because and if we can only get that wrapped up in our head, you know, that we've been forgiven. And sometimes we want to, we don't want to believe that we've been forgiven, or truly believe that we. How could He forgive me? All of the stuff I did, but we've been forgiven. That that He bore that sin. Any any comments? Okay, it says this was the cup, um, the cup of God's righteous wrath that that uh, that He trembled when drinking. Remember, He said, "If this cup could pass." From me. If there could be any other way, God, if there could be any other way. Now that was that cup of wrath that He was was saying that I wish this thing could pass from me. So He He had an idea, an inkling that this is what was taking place. So He wasn't totally unaware of what was what was happening. He was very much aware of what was going on and and the path that He was on leading up to. Uh, the the resurrection, he was, I mean, he was in tune with knowing that this was it, you know, from the the time that he sent the disciple to go get the coat, you know, I mean, and let's go back when he was in Bethany, just before, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he knew because he was on his way to Jerusalem, so he knew, he had, a, he was very well aware that this was his time, and, and remember. Uh, when he told his mother at the wedding, the very first miracle, yeah. he said, "Not my time yet. You know what I have to do with you, woman." And he wasn't being disrespectful. He knew it wasn't his time, but now he knew that this was his time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, nothing was going to stop him. The times that he he happened to get through the crowd of people that was trying to to grab him and make him king. Well, trying to push him off the mountain. Yeah. But, but yeah, but now it was his time. He didn't read it, reject it. Not my will, but thy will be done. So on the cross, uh, can we say that Jesus, because he took our place, became an enemy to, with God, an enemy to God. At that, for that instant of time of taking on our sin and the wrath that was destined for us, he became an enemy with God. What did he become? No, he did not. Nah, right, enemy. right, because Jesus himself wasn't sin. Mm -hmm. Right. He but he, 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 he
took on yeah that's like putting on a garment you know and, and and so he put on that garment just like even in, in the book of psalms it tells us that we can put on the garment of praise you know so jesus put on a garment which would which was our sin and, and bore the wrath you know so he so anyway so rather than saying he became an enemy to god he god despised him for, for that for the sin. It's almost the same with us, you know. God still loves me. Right, right. The sin, right. That's yeah. why I, I don't say, you know, how can he love a wretch like me? I say, thank God <laughs> that, that God loves a wretch like me. Right, because I don't think I'm a wretch anymore. So I, I never say that. When, you know, you know, I just because I say no. If I say if I'm forgiven and all that, I'm past the wretched state. Yeah. <laughs> So, so can we say that our sin was partly responsible for his death? That's not what, that's what yeah. he came. Right. right. Because, because he's the lamb of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the different things we say, yeah. you know, from being a pastor lamb. Um, he was a chief priest. Mm -hmm. He was all of that. Right. You know, all of that. And it's more, you know, it's that's like 25, time. you know, you, you said the most 25 names mm -hmm. for, for Jesus. Right. What he represents, you know, Prince of Peace. Yeah. He came for all of that. That's right. And so in this particular as you're describing, you know, I look at him as being that lamb. Mm -hmm. The lamb that sacrificed and that sacrifice is the crucifixion, but the that sacrifice for our sins. Right, right. And that's back to Old Testament too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so now so that's the second thing about the resurrection. And then the third thing is that he, he was buried. And so we often don't think of the burial of Jesus as part of the gospel, you know, but, but it's a very intricate part of the gospel, the burial. And, 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 and it's really what it is, is proof positive. You know, you put those two words together, proof positive. It's undeniable that he really died. And, 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 and you don't bury someone unless you know that they're dead. <laughs> Now we, we we see these little movies where they talk about buried alive, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But but really, you you don't bury someone unless they die, yeah. and so they buried him. He 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 was buried, and his his burial uh, was important because it fulfilled the scriptures, which declared uh, uh, it said that they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich. And his death, and that's coming out of uh, Isaiah 53, uh, verse 9. So, so the the it was prophesied way in advance about about his his burial, and so Jesus was buried in a tomb of a rich man, and we know that in Matthew 27, verses uh, 57 through 60, that uh, you know he he wasn't even bur he didn't he's burying somebody else's somebody else's tomb. You know, and re reminded me, and I mean, I, I had a fleeting thought about this. Uh, Abraham, when he purchased that 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 uh, burial spot for for his wife, and then the, they wanted to give it to him, and he said, "No, you can't give it." And if you think about it, that was the first piece of property that was purchased in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. If you think about. It, and so, but here we see that Jesus, when he said that the son of man doesn't even have a place to lay his head, he didn't have anything. He didn't, you know, when he, when, when he left this, when he left us, he didn't leave, we were his possession. Let me put it that way. We were his possession. He didn't leave with any material things. We were his possession because he said, I'm coming back for you, right? So he possessed us. And so he's coming back for us. And he, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And, and you know, I wouldn't have told you that if it wasn't true. So we are his possession. He's coming back to, to get us, to, to, to take us to be with him. And he said, you're going to be with me forever. Uh, what else happened? He rose. So that's what the word said. Not only did he was he buried, but it says that he rose. And, and... And it's interesting because uh, this is uh, 
another true, a truthful, essential part of the gospel. Because that's the resurrection right there. He rose. And because he rose, it, 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 it opened up all types of things for us. And although Jesus bore the full wrath of God on the cross, and, and, and as if he was a, a guilty sinner, but he was only guilty of our sin that was placed upon him. He wasn't guilty of anything that he did. And, and can you imagine uh, people that, uh, I think they say, in the wrong place at the wrong time. And they get accused of, of because they was with somebody that committed a crime, they're guilty too. Yeah. And they say that, that, that you know, and I mean, it's, it, it, can you imagine? This, this is what was happening. He's, he was guilty, not because of anything that he did, but he was guilty for taking on our guilt or taking on himself uh, uh, what, what we did. So it says he himself did not become a sinner. Even the act of, of taking on our sin and the act of, uh, uh, of uh, that was a, a holy act. So even in taking on our sin, it, w it could be looked at as a holy act, a, you know, a just act. It was something that he did not for himself. It was something that he did for us. And what is being holy? You know, holy is, is not just looking out for number one, you know. And so, so that was a holy, I would say that was a holy act. And it was a demonstration of love. So this, uh, the, the perfect savior, he became the perfect savior through the whole ordeal. This whole ordeal allowed him to become the perfect savior approved by his resurrection. Ooh, there's, something, there's something in that, that resurrection, that resurrection. And you know what he said to, 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 to Mary? When, he, when, when I am the resurrection and the life. And, and so he, he knew that. He told that to her ahead of time. When Lazarus died, you know, all you got to do is believe in me. And so even before he, he, he took all, all our sin upon himself, he declared that he was the resurrection and the life. So it was, you know, a, a foreknowledge of what he was declaring. And, 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 and it's, it's an interesting that he didn't keep this stuff secret from his disciples. He's been teaching them, teaching them this all along. Remember the things that I taught you, is what he said. Remember those things that we talked about. And, and so he wasn't keeping this a secret. And how long am I going to be with you, he said. Uh, how, you know, do we have to go over this one more time? You know, so he's declaring something to them along the way. And, uh, and then he gave them some help. <laughs> and we talked about that. Sunday, you know that or we talked about it in the past about wait until you receive power from on high and then he said in the Holy Spirit when he comes he's going to, to bring back to your remembrance all of those things that we talked about I mean and that was good for the disciples right that was good for the apostles what about Paul <laughs> I mean because Paul's writing this letter so Paul says that what I receive, what I receive is what I'm giving you. So somewhere along the line, Paul got it too. It says this, that he rose on the third day. Uh, what, what's significant about the third day? Even in Romans saying you believe you saved on the third day because of Jonah. And when Jesus said, I'm going to tear this temple down, you know, doing it with three days. Mm -hmm. Jonah. So he already... Jesus himself prophesies that's going to be on the third day. Right. You know, and telling his disciples, and remember when the disciples were told, they said, what is it? Or the Pharisees who said, who is the man who's going to tear down the temple and, and in three days? You yeah. Know, and I may have that. Oh, no. And, and um, 
Council, but the third day is confusion. And, and Paul emphasized that more than once, like I said in Romans 2, about mm -hmm. the third day. Mm -hmm. um, and what do we say about three? It's, it's, the it's, Trinity. Yeah, the Trinity and the, com the completion. Yeah. 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 Is it seven completion or three completion? Uh, three three is, um, eight is. And, and you know, people people debate the three days. And, and let's yeah. listen to this here. A day and a night makes a whole day. A portion of a whole day is reckoned as a whole day. This demonstrates how in Jesus' day, the phrase three days and three nights did not necessarily mean 72 hours. Uh, but a period including at least a portion of three days and three nights. According to Jewish reckoning, <laughs> I like that reckoning, I reckon, <laughs> three days would include parts of Friday afternoon, all of Saturday, and Sunday morning. So that, that comprised the three days. And, 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 and I even went back to say, well, what happened, what did God create in, in the, on the third day? And, and when you look at what God created on the third day, he created the earth. He created the vegetation, so so it, it was almost like he created the, uh, and then we can look at that, because if you think about what did Jesus do when he died, he buried, he went into the earth, right? And and then it tells us that he went uh, uh, and took and defeated uh, death, uh, death, hell, and the grave. Took the keys from 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 uh, Satan, you know, set the captives free. So it was something about uh, uh, taking possession. He said, you know, and, and uh, at that point, you know, death, it said death is really gonna be the last enemy to be defeated. But the death has no keys right now. He's taking the keys to, to death, hell, and the grave. So, so, uh, but anyway, so anyway, so it just was interesting to look at what God did on the third day in creation that here again we see that Jesus was was uh, he, he was uh, rose on the third day so very significant the Trinity all of the other things that it, it yeah Jonah yeah all of those other things that it, it correlate to it, it's important you know because Jonah was in the belly of the well where was the well at <laughs> and I mean I'm sure the well was in the and you know how we know how wells swim. You know they go down, they come up, they they blow out some air. You know that kind of stuff. But three days, three nights in the belly of a well, and they spit them up on on dry land. You know so yeah. So on the third day, Paul says something quite interesting here because he says it twice. He says according in verse three, it says according to the scriptures. And then again in verse 4, he says, and that he was buried um, according to the scriptures. So two times he refers back to it was based on the scriptures, meaning that it's based on the word of God, based on something that was foretold. The script, I mean, it was written. And so now that it was written, it comes to, to fruition. It comes to, to reality. This is really what happened. And, and you can't refute that. And 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 then he he's going to give. We talked about positive proof. Positive. He's going to give us some some proof here. And so Paul uh, not only repeats that, but it says, look, that that he was seen by by Cephas. Peter saw. Him. So he why did he go to Peter? Oh yeah. Because he rejected him. Right? Yeah. Three times, so he went to him to make sure that he he he, he was okay. You know, mm -hmm. that, that yeah. you're okay, Peter. You know, Wonderful. that's all right. You know what I mean? And you know, after that he was on fire. But I think that's why he went to him first, because he knew he was gonna be the leader. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and 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 Peter needed a special comfort too. Yeah. I mean, because Peter was the one that's what he said. I'm going fishing. You know, Peter was was and and had the people had the other ones follow him too. And but he, but Peter needed some comfort. He needed to be reassured and reinstated. And so uh, Jesus ministered to went to Peter and ministered to Peter. And then it says after he he met with Peter, then he met with the twelve. And and they referred to the, this as the twelve, even though Judas um, had died and they hadn't yet replaced him, they still referred to them as the twelve. Uh, he, the, after this here, after this point, they did. I thought in Acts they had replaced Messiah. They did, yeah, they they replaced, yeah, yeah but. Now let's look at uh, let's look at I mean one of these scripture Mark sixteen fourteen, 14. and then somebody look at uh, Luke twenty four thirty six through for, uh, forty three, and then somebody look at John twenty nineteen to twenty five. Let's let's look at those scriptures. Look at uh, Luke 24, 30, 24, yeah, 36. Somebody got that? 24, 36 to 43. 24, mm -hmm. Is that Forty-three. When he had said this, he showed them the hand and his feet. But while they still did not believe or joy and marvel, he said to them, "Have you not have you any feet in the food in the food here?" So they gave him a piece of four fish mm -hmm. and a honeycomb, mm -hmm. and he took it. Okay, how about John 20, verses 19 through 25? Showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad 
and they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And went through what? Which, which, chapter 25. 25. And verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. They are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twins. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore uh, said to him, we, we have seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see his hands and the, print of, and, the, and the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I would not believe. So it was, uh, it was Thomas. So it was Thomas that was not with them. Right, right. Yeah, okay. I was just trying to, and uh, so they had already replaced him with Matthias, right? Well, but but as I, as you going, I went to the Acts. Uh huh. And when Jesus ascended, they had not chosen Matthias. Okay. So the common thought must be that the twelve is talking about the disciples, not necessarily the number of people. I mean, he's just yeah. referring to the group is, of right, twelve, right? Right. And not and not the actual mm -hmm. number. Right. And so it had to be from the thighs had been chosen. Yes, okay. So um, so it was, you know, getting technical with loving of them, but they, they were called, called, called the twelve. Right, they okay. The 12. Okay, and then after that, he uh, he appeared to the 500 brethren at one time. And, uh, and so it isn't detailed in the Gospels, but suggested in Matthew 28, 10 and Matthew 28, 16 and through 17 that... Uh, that, that after uh, his resurrection and before his ascension, that Jesus met with uh, various groups of people. So, so we're talking about proof positive that that yeah, the resurrection is real. He was meeting with people all over the place. You know, not only uh, did he meet uh, with his disciples, and 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 it's interesting this is um. So Paul says this, and the greater part remains to the present. So what he was referring to there, and as it reads in the scripture, it says this. He was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remains to the present. So what he's saying is that at that particular time, not right now, he said, go ask them. They're here. <laughs> you know, so they're still here. He said, some has fallen asleep, but the greater part of them are still, still alive. Go ask them that they see Jesus. So you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, just like uh, when, when Nathaniel, you know, uh, when Philip was trying to convince Nathaniel, Nathaniel he said, oh, don't take my word for it. Come see him yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's, what, that's what we have to say, you know, about the resurrection, him becoming alive. You need to experience that for yourself. And, and that's, the, that's the proof positive right there. And so... So he said, go ask these people who saw the resurrected Jesus. And, and he says, and, and let them uh, clarify or, or, or uh, substantiate the fact that, that Jesus rose from the dead. And so then he says this. He was seen by James. And we're talking about the brother of Jesus. Now, why is that important, that he was seen by James? Well, James. <clears throat> brother didn't believe. Okay. That's it. And so, um, nor does the other brother. Mm -hmm. And sisters, apparently you didn't mention them. But the brother didn't believe. And, 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 and James became the leader at Jerusalem. Yeah. That is interesting. He wasn't one of the twelve, but he becomes the leader. Right. And, um, and, and, and some may confuse that James the one was martyred, but it wasn't, this wasn't the one that was martyred. It was, it was James. It, it, was, it was James, the son of God. Uh, um, James and John, son of um, Thunder, th uh, son of Thunder, mm -hmm. right, right, that's it. And uh, so, um, but this is James, like you said, the half brother. But James, the son of Thunder, is the one who's the first martyr. Mm -hmm. And you go to Acts, I think, eleven or twelve. And so, um, um, and I think that's important too. You identify 
a lot of the, the, the biblical character of this James, like you said, if you just reading this, you may think it's because remember the two James that are part of the twelve. Right. But this is this is the half brother who's not right. part of the twelve. And 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 this is a better way we can say that that somebody who's an outside source. And and it was known that that his brothers did not believe what he was doing. I mean, it was very well known that they they didn't they didn't go in, they didn't believe that. So that was a better uh, credibility right there. Then he says, by all the apostles. So so this leads me to say, not only were there twelve, the twelve, but there were other apostles too. And so by all the apostles, and this refers to. Uh, to different meetings that he had along the way, that where he ate with them and and uh, and told them to go to Jerusalem and and wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So, so he met with them on several different occasions before he ascended. I mean, he didn't just uh, was he would he didn't just resurrect and disappear. And so then Paul says this. Last of all, he was seen by me. <laughs> <laughs> and he, Paul may have, uh, he says that, that, that I had a three-year gestation period. Uh, I didn't have a three-year gestation period like the other uh, apostles or disciples did. So meaning that he didn't get a chance to walk with him. He says, but uh, he, he came on on the scene suddenly because I came on the scene suddenly. And, and think about this, that, yeah, that was time of a sudden how Paul came on the scene, on the road to Damascus. I mean, even though it was pre-planned, but it was sudden. I mean, because bam, Jesus shows up, he's blind, he goes in, uh, Ananias, I think That's the Sunday. Sunday, yeah, Ananias Sunday. touches him. I mean, so suddenly, bam, I mean, three days later, he's, he's in ministry, he's in ministry. You know, where before that, he was out killing people trying to, you know, holding the coats of those that were killing him. And so Paul says this, and I told you he used a, a Greek word, ekstroma, ekstroma, E-K-T-R-O-M-A, meaning abortion, stillborn, or miscarriage. He says that, that that's how he referred to himself as being not uh, uh, suitable for, for being considered an apostle. And so he says something that Paul was uh, you use this uh, striking word because the Corinthian Christians uh, consistently depreciated his his stature as an apostle. So he's saying, uh, no, that's not the only reason I'm doing this, but he, he considered himself a little apostle. But Paul says this, I will glory in my weakness. So even though he thought of himself less. He, that was really a strength for him because God used that as a strength, not as a not necessarily as, as a weakness. But he didn't get puffed up of, about the fact that that uh, what he was doing and how he met the Lord. Uh, I'm gonna end on this because we know that Jesus revealed Himself to the women and actually to the women first. Why wasn't that mentioned? as part of this resurrection story. Anybody have an idea? Why they didn't mention the women? Why Paul why Paul didn't mention the women? <laughs> and says this that because during that time 
the women didn't really have a voice and they were not considered credible witnesses. So the reason why he went through a, 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 a digression of who Jesus revealed himself to, they were all credible witnesses. And, and, and had, a, had the women been a part of that, that credibility or the giving credence to the fact that Jesus did show up and was resurrected, that that would not have been a benefit for the, the, for the credibility of, of the death, burial, resurrection. So that's what the commentary says. But I like, you know, the fact that, that like uh, Deacon Smith said, that this is a synopsis and, and that um, women are mentioned in other places and it gave credibility then. I mean, writings too, if you look like when I first read certain things, they kind of end me wow, did Jesus say that woman? Yeah. Which is early, you know. Woman, why why bother, you know, you turn to you, you, you turn to water and wine, am I correct? And then another one is, is, is me that when he called the Gentiles little dogs. Yeah. At first, but that's the way that was the culture and referred to it. Why do you call them little dogs? Mm -hmm. And our culture say, wow, that's kind of offensive. But that's what and we and we know that Jesus was a you talk about culture he was a break a culture breaker yeah. he, he he didn't let those barriers stop him yeah, right. you know the woman at the well right. even meeting talking to to, to uh, one of the sisters right after his resurrection mm -hmm. and he told don't touch me because I haven't been glorified yet right. you know so but but he 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 broke those stereotypes mm -hmm. and and so that's letting us know that, that his whole intent wasn't just for a, a, a certain group of people. You know, he was here to, to uh, for all the people, for the Gentiles as well as the house of the children of Israel. And, and, and we know too that, and I'll let you close, Pastor, but women did have, you know, presence like Lydia, for mm -hmm. example, and you know, Phoebe, mm -hmm. and then um, um, Priscilla, Priscilla and Priscilla. Yeah. You know, yeah. So those are, and, 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 and of course those that was Paul's friend. Oh, yeah. So it's not like, yeah, yeah. So it's not like they were completely right, left know, out, right? They know, but, but those that I mentioned in the New Testament, those, those, yeah. were, those were powerful, powerful yeah. men. Oh, yeah. And, and, and Anna, too. What was it, Anna? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Anna, too. So, you know, you look at that those women, they had, they had prominent yeah. um, influence, if you will, in, in the New Testament. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and, and even uh, Lois, <laughs> you know, he, he, he praised her because yeah, of the Yeah, his mother. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's on the first on Sunday, but the first time they had church wasn't the first day. Wasn't it on? Yeah, she's okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Oh, I do too. Yeah, I do. Amen. 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 Well, that's a good good lesson. Good lesson, and we'll we'll pick up uh, with. Uh, with uh, the next verse, two verses, uh, see how much we can cover next week. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Thank you. Giving us just a moment in time, but uh, what a moment, God. We're praying, God, for revelation knowledge and, and being able to uh, allow this word to, to manifest itself within our hearts, within our minds, that we, Lord, will be able to walk and, and, and walk it out. And not only walk it out, but talk it out. And we thank you for so right now, Father, I pray that you bless everyone that has heard this, this message, those who have participated, those who desire to be here on Wednesday night. God, that you would make it happen. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.